Hello everyone and welcome back, I am Duke Silver, and today we are playing Potion Master. Now Potion Master has been my most consistent um, hero this this patch, um, with over 20 games played and uh, roughly 1.95 average placement with Trophy Hunter. Um, I think it's safe to say that uh, this is definitely one of my better heroes. Uh, we start this game off really strong with a uh, Poly Slay into a, uh, a Lucky here, so we're going to get a ton of Econ value. Um, normally I would just take the uh, the Cindy here, but I think we're going to take the Bossy. I mean, we've already got another Dwarf. We might as well. And we're going to get paid off here. Um, we're going to take out the 1-1 there and also be able to take out Zippy's Egg. So that sets them uh, relatively far behind immediately, which is good for us. Uh, we're going to get our free unit here. And then uh, I'm used to being able to like shrink with a... Uh, with a chicken in the shop and then being able to, to buy the rest. So I kind of did my math wrong, but uh, but we do get a free roll out of that, um, which is uh, ends up being very, very good. Uh, and also we tie this fight, so we remain at 40. But uh, but yeah, we, we roll into the shop, which has a triple and two pairs in it. I don't know that we're gonna take all the all the uh, the pairs here, but we're definitely gonna triple our our, um, our dragon here, which, which we're gonna get fairy tale, which is gonna enhance the rest of our buys. And then, uh, and then we're gonna cast a spell. And it's definitely going to be a targeted spell on the unicorn here. Uh, we did not lock the uh, the Billy Gruff pair, as uh, I just don't think it's necessarily worth it there. But we do roll into another one, and we get it for free, so uh, everything kind of worked out. Um, and then this shop's like uh, kind of interesting. I mean, there's uh, there's Romeo, which has the best, probably the best stats overall, probably the best long-term pick, but. Uh, I mean, taking a 10, a 10 toughness donkey on uh, 3.1 is uh, is pretty good as well, and so that's what we're gonna do here. Uh, we are gonna go down a unit, but I think it's better than better than locking here. Um, just taking this uh, this level two treasure immediately. As I mean, freeing up a spot with uh, with our donkey here is uh, is a fine play, anyways. And we pick up a boiling beaker, which is gonna complement our hero power very nicely. Um, unfortunately, uh, we are gonna take a bunch of damage here. Uh, um, yeah, the uh, opponent just had a, had a little, a few too many stats, and uh, the fact that they had an 11 power character to take out our donkey meant we didn't get any value there. Uh, we're definitely going to take this doubly, as if we can find uh, any targeted spell that can hit the doubly, um, that's going to be a lot of stats for us. Um, we do have to find a pretty specific uh, targeted spell here, though. I'm pretty sure it's just magic research at this stage. Um, so yeah, we're, we're taking a couple rolls trying to find that, just because, I mean, it would be a ton of stats. But uh, but yeah, I think we're going to have to settle for uh, for something else. We're going to take one last roll here, as we do have one character that we can sell. We can sell this Lonely Prince, like it's not that big a deal. <clears throat> Alright, we take our roll, we don't find it, so we're just going to cast uh, cast a spell on our Billy Gruff here. We're going to get the plus four, plus four. And uh, and yeah, that's gonna have to be uh, gonna have to be good enough. <clears throat> opponent's uh, opponent's donkey does some work, but uh, but our our donkey also does some work here, and we end up winning this fight. And we get a discount discounted friendly spirit, so we immediately find something even better than doubly to put our spells into. So that's very nice. And there's a couple of crafties here. They're two gold for nine nines um, with the with the bossy in, in play. I feel like I feel like the value there is just a little bit too too much, and, uh, and I need to take it. Uh, we do find a targeted spell, so we're gonna we're gonna increase the stats of our our friendly spirit here. I consider putting it on the doubly just because I mean it gets immediately gets a lot of stats, but I mean the friendly spirit stats can get can go on to the doubly, so uh, so I think it's probably it's I mean just objectively better to put these stats onto the uh, friendly spirit as they both kind of they both kind of. Um, double dip on stats in, in the same way, but uh, the doubly stats are just more front-loaded, whereas friendly spirit stats um, are a little bit a little bit more random, but, but also it's a character that lasts longer on the board. Alright, we are going to take a bunch of damage to this uh, this Celestial Tiger, who had a very large friendly spirit, or er, sorry, Wizards Familiar already. Just a little bit of a delay here, as uh, as this was on stream, and I was uh, was acknowledging the uh, the raid from uh, from Horse Thief there. Shout out to Horse Thief, a great uh, storybook content creator on Twitch. 
one of my, one of my personal favorites. Definitely, if you uh, if you hang out on Twitch, I would I would I would highly recommend. It's a it's a highly he's highly worth your follow. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, and also, I mean, of course, he was very he was generous enough to uh, to send us a raid there um, on on this particular day. All right, Friendly Spirit 1 goes on to Friendly Spirit 2, which is fantastic. It means we get to triple dip on our stats. Um, they, don't, they don't go on the doubly, though, which is uh, a little unfortunate, but that's fine. We, en we end up with not enough stats to win anyways here. Sold something considering I was going to buy the uh, the Riverwish Mermaid, but I figured even at 2 gold, I don't think I really want it. This crafty pickup is very good, though. Take a secret stash because our health isn't all that great. We are against the ghost though, so we're not in any threat of taking any damage here. And I believe this ghost is the uh, the Zippy whose egg we cracked on uh, on 2.1. So uh, pretty unfortunate for them that they weren't able to recover. But I mean that's the risk of playing egg. One of the reasons that I really dislike egg in general. Um, we get to triple our friendly spirit, which already has a ton of which already had a ton of stats on either of the the spirits there. And uh, being able to, uh, to combine those those stats into a very, very large uh, character is very, very good here. Um, also, we get a forking rod out of it. Uh, maybe my favorite treasure in the game, which I I, I mention uh, often, but, uh, but that remains true. Um, and the fact that we've got the forking rod plus the beaker with, uh, with Potion Master, I mean, it's just a really, really good setup. And we get a discounted... Um, uh, copycat here, so we're just gonna jam that copycat in front of this friendly spirit because it's gonna be it's gonna be doling out huge huge amounts of stats. I'm considering buying this Aeon. If if copycat was still a mage, I would absolutely buy Aeon here. But um, again, we're just hit with a another instance where uh, where copycat not being a mage anymore is just a just a net negative on the game, and I will continue to complain about this. <laughs> um, okay, we're gonna buy this Lance. Um, I did think that I was going to be able to get uh, get the uh, treasure this turn um, by casting the uh, stone skin on it uh, with the forking rod and boiling beaker and uh, hero power buff. Um, but I did do my math wrong, and it does come up a little bit short here. So maybe I should have just went for the uh, friendly spirit instead. But this does put us, put us very very close to uh, to being finished the lance quest already. Lance gets a, gets a slay. Unfortunately, our friendly spirit is the last thing standing, and we don't get our copycat attack. Alright, we got a free crafty. I mean, it's a 10-10. And, uh, oh, so Lance, Lance is guaranteed treasure next turn at 20, or 25 health here, which is fantastic. I was considering the Baba Yaga here, but, uh, I don't think that's where we want to be. I don't think that's what we want to lean into. I think our copycat friendly spirit kind of uh, comp that we have going here is going to be the best thing for us to do. Speaking of copycats, there's another one. So we are absolutely going to jam that. We would definitely like more uh, more copycats, as I feel like we haven't seen too many. Um, and here I should have bought the wombats, but I do roll past it, and I think I do think that was a mistake, unfortunately. And yeah, we end up uh, end up not buying anything this turn, which uh, again I think that's a mistake. We're just gonna swap the uh, the doubly into the back now, as uh, as Lancelot is gonna have a easier time taking a hit from from uh, potential uh, attackers in the front row, and it does. But the, they were too big for us to uh, to handle there. Um, fortunately, our friendly spirit buffs go on to our doubly now that it's, that it was in the back row and get it up to over 300, 300. So uh, pretty good there. Alright, we're looking at a little at our level 5 treasures. We're feeling pretty strong. We can probably just get out a secret stash. And I think it's either Hand of Miners or Ambrosia. And I think uh, since we have a full turn here, I think we want to go with Ambrosia. I mean, Hand of Minus, if we were going into 6 or something, uh, might be worth it. But uh, but I think uh, Ambrosia, we can throw our doubly there for now and uh, and then potentially get a ton of stats onto it. We are going to cast a cantrip uh, to the, on the doubly. Just so it survives, like a lightning bolt or something. Um, 
yeah and there we put it in the we put it in the ambrosia slot so it's going to get very large if it gets uh if it gets any amount of these uh friendly spirit stats and then we're gonna we're gonna lock this tlk even though we're going into six i think uh tlking this lance is going to be very good it's going to potentially give us direction um and yeah i think that's something that uh that we can def definitely use here like we've got we've got obviously like a great tempo board we're, we're really making use of our friendly spirit stats in a great way but um we would we could definitely benefit from a from sort of a, an end game comp uh, direction um unfortunately we don't really find something with direction but we do get a we do get a lot of uh stats on from this uh from the sign of the storm i mean we're still uh we're, we're casting fork spells uh we, i mean we don't have a monster book or anything but uh but as you can see like the, it's still a pretty decent size at 8391 all right and here we're gonna we're gonna take a, an echo wood and i think echo wood is gonna be uh an even better uh it's gonna be it's been gonna be a good uh good kind of uh sort of sort of capstone for this uh this friendly spirit comp um, and we can definitely move it over into the Ambrosia slot once, uh, once this, uh, this doubly is kind of run its course. And I think that's going to be happening relatively quickly here. All right, we beat the ghost there and we're down to a top three situation now. Uh, we did lock the drink me potion. Um, I was just gonna TLK something, um, and then I figured there's nothing worth TLKing, so I looked at the Burning Palm, and then I realized that uh, that this Croc plus the uh, the Scion of the Storm is uh, is an even better option, and uh, and now we're gonna be moving the Echo Wood um, over into the Ambrosia slot, and we're gonna be putting the uh, the Croc in the back. So uh, so when when Croc summons uh, Scion of the Storm, because Scion of the Storm is technically a zero zero. Um, the game looks at uh, looks at it looks at it as a zero zero, and then applies its static buff, which is counts the number of spells you cast, and then uh, and then adds those stats kind of like instantaneously. And uh, Echo Wood does see that, so that's why uh, that's why this is um, this is going to be the way that we're going to set it up here. Um, not not everything will give stats to uh, to Echo Wood when they're summoned, but in, uh, Scion of the Storm in particular does. And you're gonna see, uh, yeah, we summon the 98106, and the Echo Wood gets a big chunk of stats. And uh, I mean, with this setup, I mean, I think uh, I think Herc is a great, uh, great pickup here. It's gonna be better than the Crafty, of course. Um, the Double is nice to have, just in case it catches some stats. It just, uh, it's just a big, uh, big chunk of stats for us. Um, but yeah, if we can get some stats on, if we can get um, one of these triggers onto the, uh, the Herc, then it's going to be able to finish in, in one hit, which is going to be really nice. We definitely, uh, we can definitely use a level six treasure here. Um, eventually we'll want to get a, get out of Ambrosia and, uh, and Boiling Beaker will have, uh, run its course, uh, pretty quickly here as well. Unfortunately, uh, we did not get the stats onto the Herc, but I mean, we got we got a quarter of the progress ready to go, or progress done, um, and we're definitely still going to have enough stats to take out this uh, this ghost. All right, there's another Echo Wood, which we are absolutely going to take, and we're going to do another uh, another forked Burning Palm onto our uh, friendly spirit. Which is uh, absolutely massive at this point. 7464. So every time one of these copycats attack, it's uh, it's giving 100 and 148 plus 128 uh, stats to something. And we're gonna take a speculative uh, soul tack here, um, just in case we run into uh, an opponent that's uh, running some kind of uh, doom breath or uh, or way to attack the back line, which I mean I feel like is gonna be is gonna happen very very soon. Um, just based on uh, on how powerful our backline is, and opponents were, are going to have to attack it. Um, so stats work like this opponent is very strong. Sphinx with Crystal Ball um, obviously can be very good. Um, and yeah, we get relatively relatively fortunate, I guess, to uh, to be able to tie there. 
I think I think the numbers were pretty were pretty tied on the tracker, but but yeah, they are very strong, and uh, we're definitely gonna have to keep an eye out for them. And this is a celestial tiger who was extremely strong earlier. Um, I think we're, we're gonna get out of the boiling beaker now, and we're gonna take gloves of thieving. Uh, both these opponents are playing spell builds. If we could steal another scion, then that would be great. If we could potentially croc another one, then uh. Or say we say we even get to croc two more, and then we can combine the crocs. That would be, uh, I mean, that would be ideal. But, uh, but yeah, I figure gloves of thieving is gonna have more, uh, more impact than just a couple more stats. And we're gonna lock a cantrip here, even without the, uh, the boiling beaker. I think uh, I think the the stats onto the friendly spirit are gonna be are gonna be worth uh, worth taking here. Um, unfortunately, this. Uh, um, Doom Breath did uh, did kind of ruin us there. Um, so again, that's why we picked up the Soul Tax. So now we're gonna we're definitely gonna be looking at playing the Soul Tax in the future. Um, also, we did steal a Scion of the Storm, which uh, is exactly the thing that we wanted to steal. Uh, we we checked their comp and and we basically like tried to figure out which uh, which was the one that we wanted the most, and we got it. So, so that's a pretty huge pickup here. And uh, here I'm going to mix a whistle the soul tack, which is definitely a mistake as it puts stats on the soul tack and we want it to have zero power so we can put it in slot one. Definitely take a couple health there and we're going to fork, considered forking the uh, the stone skin on the um, friendly spirit, but uh, decided against it uh, eventually or after, ultimately I should say. Um, and yeah, since we're against the ghost, Pandora's box is a no brainer here. I mean, if we, we absolutely want uh, Mirror Mirror, I think. I think that's by far the best uh, the best option. I mean, like there's there's a world where World Tree is is, uh, is good, but I mean, World Tree is a little bit boring. And we get a Holy Grail. This is a little bit of an awkward um, build for a Holy Grail, though. Um, we Also, we can get out of this Ambrosia and take a Mimic here. Um, Mimic, I mean, Mimic Fork is, is good, but, uh, but we will be able to replace, uh, I mean, our Holy, Holy Grail slot and, uh, um, okay, apparently I, uh, I ended up, um, switching that around. Um, so yeah, we're, I mean, we're going to want to replace the Ambrosia anyways, but, uh, but yeah, we're going to be able to find something else, um, to, to fit with the Mimic next turn on our Holy Grail turn, provided we survive. Um, but also, this is, uh, this is a pretty decent setup, just because uh, the Ambrosia is going to turn turn the um, the Scion golden, and again, it's gonna it's basically going to start at zero, and uh, and the uh, Echo Wood is going to see those stats. Um, so it's it, it's almost like it changes to a zero zero, and then gets the golden numbers. As you see, the uh, Echo Wood starts at 290, 290, and then our first summon there um, gives uh, gives our Echo Wood a huge huge boost to stats as well. So maybe it doesn't start at zero, but uh, it definitely uh, it definitely sees the numbers increase because of the Ambrosia. So that I mean that works with both Scion and uh, and Shoulder Fairies. Just uh, I'm sure you've seen the Shoulder Fairies Ambrosia comp before. And uh, and again, this is kind of an awkward spot just because like generally with Holy Grail you want to like you want to be looking for a specific direction, whereas we kind of have a comp already. So we're just looking for pieces, and this is kind of a niche comp as well. So like the, the amount of pieces that are actually gonna uh, benefit us are, is kind of small. Um, there's a world where we could like transition to trees, which is why I take a speculative ashwood here. But uh, but as you can see, the uh, shops are a little bit dry here. All right, we got a level six treasure. The mimic, uh, excuse me, mimic uh, phoenix feather is going to be fantastic for us. It's going to give us a huge, huge power spike, and you, we saw the, there was a triple for the uh, the or the Soltak, but again, we wanted to have we want to have zero power in our front in our first slot, and yeah, unfortunately, all we add is uh, is a, is a golden uh, Scion, which is not not a ton, but um, the opponent uh, makes the per the perfect attack for us anyways to uh, to just take out our our Soltak, giving us some board space, allowing our copycat to attack and get maximum value and. Uh, and we win very handily um, because of that. We don't even need to use our Phoenix Feather there. And yeah, now we're against the Sphinx, who was uh, pretty strong last time we saw them. Uh, and they, they're all, they've only gotten stronger, definitely, because they had uh, they had Crystal Ball. 
Um, if they've added like a forking rod or like a wand of weirding or something since, they might be uh, might be too large for us to handle. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to replace the ambrosia, and uh, and now we don't have a we don't have a scion to put in our ambrosia slot anymore, so we don't get that initial um, burst of uh, of stats on our our echo wood. But um, also, I did miss a croc while uh, while on the Holy Grail turn because that's not something that I was like necessarily looking out for. Um, we get a decent decent pegomorph there. I mean, it takes out it takes out a character. We don't have enough board space for our second scion summon, but uh, but our our Echo Wood is of course big enough um, that it's gonna it's gonna take the uh, the Phoenix Feather uh, trigger immediately there and uh, and yeah that's the difference the Phoenix Feather the Mimic Phoenix Feather is the difference between winning and losing there Phoenix Feather Mimic is just uh, exactly what we needed to win the lobby and we uh, we eventually get there and as I said before this game was played live on stream. So uh, if you want to come and hang out live with these uh, with these fantastic, smart, and uh, and cool people on Twitch chat, um, then uh, then yeah, my my Twitch will be in the link in the description and in the pinned comment. Shout out to Carol for making this plug both fun and easy. Um, and yeah, again, like and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. It really helps the channel. And uh, and yeah, I hope uh, hope you all have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you tomorrow.